I swear, every single time I record, like, I never remember how I set up my camera, and it just gets jankier and jankier. <laughs> but hey, if it works, it works. Hey, friends, it's me, the Ebony Otaku, the little rounded nerd. She doesn't have time for pontification today. I ordered two things I really wanted, and we're going to open them right now. She's been on Amazon. So if you're just joining, or if you've been here for a while, um, I am in the middle of uh, putting together an army for my Horus Heresy box, The Age of Darkness. And that particular box comes with a rule book with a lot of lore and stuff in it. And we've been doing readings about the Primarchs out of that book. I need to get back to doing some Warhammer novel readings, but I'm just so into reading Minka Lusk right now. I'll do some readings from her and Fabius Bile soon, but I'm just all into the story right now. Um, but the rule books, uh, they come with a lot of information, yet there is still more information that you need to play the games proficiently. Um, as of the day I'm recording this in the evening, I'm actually going to finish my Praetorian and paint and put together my tank and I will have a completed heresy army. Now the box comes with enough for building two armies. I have chosen one chaos army and one loyalist army. My chaos are Emperor's children. And then my loyalists are going to be salamanders. Um, I do have another army, a full kill team already built, and those are my bearers of the wood, chaos. Uh, and then I also have two novitiate boxes, so adepta sororitas to put together, and a few more Eldar ships. So she's got plenty to keep her busy. <laughs> and more hammer. And dadgummit, we went, we went to, we were looking for actually. Um, sleeves for magic cards uh this past weekend and god i can't go in those stores because there is uh, some novitiate mech suits that i saw i don't know what their official name is but that gun there's 75 dollars for the box and i could not justify it right then but i was just like i'll be back for you i'll be back <laughs> uh, but uh there are other books in whenever you pick up warhammer there is more than just the initial rule book that comes in whatever game you're playing with whatever box there are other things because get your coins how capitalism works um so we picked up the libras we and me uh we picked up the libras uh the books for chaos and for loyalists and it also comes not just with you know more rules but really understanding you know the differences between playing chaos versus playing loyalist and then like your different weapons that you choose because when you're building your armies you have options in there on how do you make them a loyal faction how do you make them a um a chaos faction uh and then an, an, not just that so like the tank uh the the horse heresy box age of darkness it came with a spartan tank which whew, that thing is trying to do me in but I'm, I'm gonna get her built tonight i'm gonna get her done um but the spartan tank there's only one in the box and there's only one um dreadnought in the box there's 10 terminators and then 40 marines so ideally you're supposed to have 20 marines of one 20 of the other 10 you know i'm sorry five of your Terminators go for one, five for the other. I did all 10 of mine in Emperor's Children because I have another box of 30K Terminators. So I will just paint those 10 to go with my other faction, which they'll probably actually end up being Ultramarines uh, because I'm combining these uh, um, Emperor's Children with my Warbearers Kill Team for certain games to get points up, depending on how many points I'm playing against, which that's, again, why you need the books <laughs> um, to let you know how you can combine what weapons are allowed and stuff but when you get uh, the expanded books you're not just getting you know more lore which we love a lore we love the lore but you're getting just really more narrowed down rules on how it works for what you're playing and just making sure that you're you're having a good fair game um, so I'm I'm looking forward to just being able to do uh, more with Warhammer. Um, I don't think any of my aeronautical flyers are allowed in any of the current games. I, I might be able to sneak them into one page rules that maybe, I, I don't know. I have, a, I've only done one page rules with, um, actual space Marines. I've never done it with, 
other stuff. So, but, but this weekend, as of the weekend I'm filming this, we're going to like my first like event for Warhammer. And I was really determined to have my armies finished. We've been practicing playing the game. Um, and honestly, the game, once you understand what you can do with each step of the turn, it gets a whole lot easier. How much are your weapons worth? How far can your guys move? And there are like three motions that you go through in every single turn. And you know, how do you respond? How do you know how many dice to use? Once you get that figured out, it gets a whole lot fun. And the more we practice, the better we get at it. I will be at the beginner's table. <laughs> this weekend so I'll definitely post pics because I this when I say this weekend the events on June 1st so this is well after June 1st but in real time I'll probably post pictures of the event and my, my dudes on the really good scenery and stuff like it, it's gonna be a good time but she had to have the expanded rule books so I forget which is in what box that I ordered them on different days the multi-tools on the floor but we have our handy pink pocket knife um, it's actually an EMT knife. Somebody saw the EMT logo on it when it was sticking out of my pocket. Or I may have had a clip to my shirt. And they were like, oh my god, are you a first responder? No, I'm not. <laughs> I am not a uh, first responder. So, let me see here. This is a weird box. Um, like, it's not closed. But the book in there is wrapped in plastic because the day that this got delivered, I think it was raining. I can feel that it's wrapped in plastic. I just cut in cardboard. It's just, it makes a weird noise when you cut it, so I'm just going to rip it. Rip it good. I think it's backwards or upside down, but we don't care. Here it comes. Duh. We need dramatic boahs. Boah. Boah, boah. Is my dog back there? No, he's not in here. Toss. God, I hope I didn't break something. That was a mighty toss. <gasps> this is Libra. Astartes. Loyalist Legions Astartes Army book. So when we were practicing playing the game and we were using the rule book, it kept telling us, refer to page X in the Libra blah. And we were like, we don't have those books. Now, granted, you know, there are ways to get them that I'm not going to mention here because I don't need the Black Library coming for me. <laughs> um, but when you have the ability to support things legitimately, I firmly believe in doing that because that's just how the economy works. Buy the things. <laughs> you know, not everybody can do that. But that's why we gather around children. Like the hard thing is like a game like Aeronautica. They don't make it anymore. So you're just lucky to get what you get. They, they, they just don't make it in this one. So let's... uh. Take the, the cellophane off. She clings to me like cellophane. Big plastic submarine. Driving me insane. Well, now that's over. She's a 90s kid. Sorry. <laughs> oh, don't you just love like that really tight shrink wrap and it just peels off so nicely? Shh, shh, shh. ASMR. This is not an ASMR channel. Oh, okay. Unwrapped. And you know what we do with this stuff. All right. So, oh my God. It's so beautiful. Let us, let, let's admire. I love it. It's the, oh, the sign of the Achilles. You gotta make the Achilles. Whoa. Um, but I actually have this on a t-shirt. One of my uh, Taekwondo students like 15 years ago when they realized I like Warhammer, even though I wasn't playing at the time, I was just reading the books, made me a t-shirt with a sign of the Akila on it. They were trying to start a t-shirt business. I never wear it because I don't know if I'm going to get like hand slapped by the guild word, the, the, the guild gods. But I love that shirt. Thank you, Austin. Um, but yeah, the Liber Astartes. Oh, that's a beautiful book. It's heavy. It's, this might be bigger than the other one. Holy cow. Mm. <laughs> you know where there's things to read. She must read. Liber Astartes. Loyalist Legiones Astartes Army Book. The legendary space marine legions of the 31st millennium fielded a diverse range of genetically enhanced warriors and advanced war machines superior to any other military force in the galaxy. These were the tools that had forged the Imperium and those that would all but destroy it in the fires of rebellion. 
Within this book, the Legiones Astartes are revealed at the apex of their glory in the infamous age of darkness that was the brutal crucible of the Horus heresy. Presented herein are details of those space marine legions that remained loyal to the Emperor of Mankind during the turmoil of the Horus heresy, including army list profiles for the vast panoply, what a good word, Panoply of the Legiones Astartes, allowing players to build and field Space Marine Legion armies using all of the core units available. This book also includes full details of the warriors, war gear, and tactics of the Loyalist Legion, as well as the rules needed to represent them on the battlefield. I still have another book to open, so let's crack. Um, let's see here. Oh my goodness, you open it up and it is a map of the galaxy of all of the planets in our galaxy. And you can actually pick out their home worlds. Oh, there's Nostramo, Nocturne. Uh, oh, she's gonna spend some time in this book. I just, I'm gonna lose a weekend in here. Oh, 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 oh in color. We all know the Emperor loves his gold. You seen some custodes? Goldy gold, 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 golden gold, <laughs> goldy gold. Let's see here. So we've got our Ford, which kind of gives you a foundation of what's going on. So this is basically everything you need to know about the Loyalist Legions. And then of course for the game, scoring and all that kind of stuff and the rules and their turns. So we have the Dark Angels, the White Scars, Space Wolves, Imperial Fist, Blood Angels, Iron Hands, Ultramarines, Salamanders, and the Raven God. So those are the ones who remain loyal. I personally, this is me, I count the Alpha Legion as loyal. Fight me in the comments. <laughs> so let's see here. So we have our HQ. Um, elite troops, uh, dedicated troops, fast attack, heavy support, lords of war, appendices, and then the different legions have their own. Let me actually just jump over to the salamanders. What, were, what page was the salamanders on? You know it. Do they, do they teach kids how to use, like, appendices, directories, table of contents anymore? Because a lot of times when I teach kids, like in Sunday school and stuff, and I say, turn to, blah, and they're like, where? And I'm like, there's a table of contents. What's a table of contents? Y'all ain't ready for lore if we can't use a table of contents. It's concerning. What is going on? Anyway, <laughs> I guess we can just look everything up on the interwebs and just type it in, you know. This kind of thing isn't as much fun. But she loves a book. Those are the ultramarines. That past their weight. So some of these pages don't have numbers at the bottom. That's why it's taking me so long. So like, see that? No no page number on the art pages. It's definitely the ultramarines. Um, you can just tell by that Robute Blue. I've told this before, but I still find it hilarious. When I first started reading because before the audiobook started coming out, that's how old I am. There weren't any audiobooks left yet. But um, I didn't know how to pronounce Robute. Like on paper, R O B U T E. I thought it was a robot <laughs> until I heard, I think it was, um, it was it was definitely a Dan Abnett novel being read. I think Nick Kime was reading. And he went, Robute. And I was like, oh, that sounds way more majestic than robot. <laughs> Here we are. So we're at the Sally Alley Alley Manders. So let's see here. So all models with this special rule are subject to the provisions. Okay. So this isn't just about the Legion. This is like, how do you field this Legion? And this is why people, I think, love this game. It's a game with a lot of lore. Um, like I've told y'all, D&D &D is not my game. I'll, I'll play it with the fam, um, but it's not my game. Like, I like the models. I like scenery. I like the I like the whole, like, in-depth war experience, and I'm very familiar with the lore. So, like, it's fun to visualize the actual battles that you read about happening. Like, it's just, it's different. Um, but, yeah, it tells you, so, Salamander's warlord traits. So, if you got a warlord, here's what they can do. Um... Rights of war. Here's the effects of certain things, the limitations, the effects. So these are the pages that the rule book was pointing to. It would say, hey, go look at blah, 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 page X in, Le in the Libra Astartes. And we'd go, we don't have that. 
<laughs> so, um, yeah, we had to go get it. So, oh, oh, this is great here. So this is close to the tank that I'm building. That's not a Spartan tank, but it's close. The treads, y'all, the treads. I'm making my tank neutral, so I never finished that thought, did I? So I am making my tank neutral because in the Age of Darkness box, you're supposed to build two armies. That tank, I'm not going to paint it for either Legion. I'm going to make it so I can use it for whoever I'm building at the time. So it's not going to have Loyalist insignia on it. It's not going to have Traitor insignia. It's going to be neutral. Cheater, cheater, pumpkin eater. Uh, okay, yeah, so here's what I was talking about with weapons. So the different weapons that you can put on them. So when you're cutting your dudes out, you have all these little weapons. And depending on what they have, that tells you what those weapons can do. But depending on what legion it is, it can change. <laughs> so you have to be able to refer back to the rules of the legion that you're playing. Which I guess is okay because it can take so long to build an army. So as you're building and listening to books on tape and stuff, you can get really familiar with how it works for the army that you're building. So there's that. I'm, I'm here for it. Um, oh, yep. Here are the pages. 314 and 315. So uh, Vulcan. I don't, have a, I don't have any Primarchs. And they're really hard to find. Like, I I, for, I I want a Fulgrim or an Angel Exterminatus so bad, but we cannot find one. I don't want to print one. I would like to find an official one. Anyone from G-Dubs listening to me? She's trying to give you money. I want an Angel Exterminatus. Badly. Um, <laughs> I'm not big enough for anyone to care about sponsoring me for anything. Um... <laughs> So there's that. <laughs> um, but yeah, so if I had a Vulcan, there are his rules. Um, I don't. Ooh. He got a range of 18 inches. That's the whole stick. <laughs> All right. And then my pro class squad is worth 175 points. So four dudes and a squad, which I have five. I have four squads of these guys. So all together, you know, those are... She does not math. What was that, 600 points? I was trying to build a 1,000-point army for this event. I think that I, like, sailed past that. <laughs> so, but again, it tells you what kind of gear they can have. And when you're rolling and doing your turns, how much their points are worth as they're doing it. So this is pretty great. But the other good thing here, oh, the Terminator Squad. Uh, up to four. They can do this. They're worth 250 points, and I have two squads. She is at her points. Is my Praetor even going to get to be a part of this army? Luckily, there's an app, which I don't know how to, like, show y'all the app. and do. Like, she's not that advanced. Um, <laughs> maybe one day. Uh, but there is an app that we use that helps us look at the models that we have and the weapons they have. Because you don't have to use every weapon that your person has. Like, I've seen people who, like, because you get some extras of some pieces, like, especially the weapons, where they magnetize them so they can, like, take them off and put them on. You can just be like, hey, for this battle, I'm only using these weapons to balance out your points. Like, that's totally allowed. Um, and if it's not, find other people to play with. <laughs> We're not talking about, like, official tournaments here, okay? Here's what I wanted to get to. So, one thing that I love is that they put the artwork in these books. I don't ever like to copy directly when I'm building. Like, if you've seen any of the Marines I've done, they're not direct copies of paint jobs that are out there. Or even the artwork that officially comes from G-Dubs. While it is gorgeous, look look at that. That's insane. That's beautiful. I freely acknowledge the gorgeousness of the art. Um, you want to make your Legion yours. It's yours. Like, yes, they have colors that are theirs. But how you use those colors in the armor. <laughs> like, my, um, my Emperor's Children, they are just spectacular. They've got, like, this iridescent pinky purple thing going on. Like, every time you turn them, it looks different. They've got, like, a gold trim sheen happening. They're beautiful. Um, when I was first doing them and I base coated them in the fulgrim pink, somebody was like, that's not a base coat. It is now my army. I wanted pink space marines. There is a space marine color that says fulgrim on it. So I used it. <laughs> um, but what I really wanted it was to be like the outline of the trim. So I, after base coating that way, I was able to go back in with, uh, two colors. I can't remember their name, but a really nice pink wash 
and a um, purple wash and go in there and create this illusion of painting so that when you turn it, you can see that purpley pink thing going on. And then I trimmed it in the Gehenna Gold. I remember that name because I've used the Gehenna so much on the Emperor's Children because Fulgrim's extra and we love him for it. <laughs> so it's your army. Like you can stay true to the theme, the core of what you're building and make it yours. Like that's part of the fun of building is you are making it yours. You're not making it for anyone but you. Now, if you plan on going out to like official tournaments and playing stuff, hey, there's rules for that. But I, I'm never going to do that. I play with friends. I do local events. I'm not taking this to, you know, some big games workshop convention and be like, look at how great I am. That's not going to happen. <laughs> she's a she's not that girly not that girly oh my god okay so now we've got some actual painted figures look at Vulcan look look at the magnificence Vulcan lives magnificent and then his different warriors oh my god look at the tank that's my tank is that a Spartan tank yep that's a Spartan tank yep that's my tank that's what I'm building this evening pray for me <laughs> so, and this I'm kind of glad to get inspiration from because I was trying to figure out how to paint the tank tread. Now I see how they kind of did this weird effect on it. So I can do that. I can do that. I have a bad habit of painting things that no one's going to see because I know it's painted. But, ah, and then it goes to the Raven Guard. So huh, that's one. There's two of this. There is the Libra Astartes. Why did these come in two completely different boxes? Like, not even just that they came on different days, whatever. They could have been coming from different warehouses. But even how they, how they package them. Like, rhyme and or reason. And I clicked the little thing that said receive fewer packages and come later. But. Uh, yeah, yay for Amazon. <laughs> Here it is. Oh, I didn't do that correctly, did I? Oh. That's what I get. <laughs> oh, here it is. This is the one I really wanted because she all about the heresy. Uh, Liber Hereticus. Oh, y'all can see my whole desk. <laughs> so, that, that's great. Um, cellophane off. We already did the ASMR of it all. She really just wants to open her book. So... Yay. I was hoping the back would be different, and it's not. They just replaced loyal with heretic. <laughs> it's fine. But, look at that. The artwork is definitely more on the uh, dangy side. So, ugh. On, oh, these are like heavy as newborn babies. Um, so, here's the difference in the book side by side. Uh, we've got the Eye of Horus and the Sign of the Aquila. And then, of course, the depictions of war on the back are different. Loyalists winning, heretics winning. Way more fire. <laughs> so, oh, so Liber Hereticus. Let us uh, jump over. Oh, yeah, they've got the same map at the beginning, so that's great. Ooh. And see, this is why I made my Terminators ca all chaos. Because they look cooler. You can't deny it. They look cooler. Um, oh, that's so great. I love everything about it. So let me jump to the Legion, Chaos Legion that I've built. There are bears of the word, but I'm doing the Emperor's Children now. So, of course, we have Emperor's Children. <laughs> They're the first Trader Legion listed. Iron Warriors, Night Lords, World Eaters, Death Guard, Thousand Sons, Sons of Horus. Formerly the Luna Wolves. Uh, Word Bears and the Alpha Legion, who I still stand. I will die on this hill. They are not traitors. <laughs> That's my hill. Come for me. <laughs> so, anywho, let us jump to. Where are we? Emperor's Children is on page 150. Let's see the beauty that is here. Show me a good Fulgrim. Show me a gorgeous Fulgrim. That's what I want to see. 130, 140, 140. Seven, one forty-nine, one fifty. All right, just you know, more rules. The the pages we have to turn to in order to know what we're doing. But we're gonna look at some art. 
let's do art to it. Da -da 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 -da. Doing videos on how to play the game. I don't know if I'll ever do that. I'll do. I'll always do videos on playing the game. Like, look, look at how much fun I'm having. Um, but I don't know if I'm ever going to be an instructor on how to either paint or play because um, I don't know. Like, I am an instructor by trade, but I don't know if I can teach people how to play this. It's. It's. I'll think about it. <laughs> but here they are. Oh, the glorious purple. Mine are outlined in pink. It's your army. Do what you want. But we love it. I love the art inspiration. That They're just so damn gaudy. <laughs> the, the gold and the silver and the purple. Like, it's look like look, purple tank. My tank's going to end up being, like, good industrial colors, basically, so I can use it for anyone. Um, whew, here he is. Like, I know the models exist, but by the time I got interested in them, I cannot find a fulgrim to save my life. Like, not even online. We've looked. Um... Look at the Phoenician. Look at him. Look at him in all his van glory. The Phoenician rises. He does. Beautiful. Got all that hate in his heart. And so pretty. There's a lesson. <laughs> Don't be fooled by looks, y'all. They, they can be beautiful and will cut you. <laughs> so, but I do love um, their look. Uh, yes, in heresy, they are primarily purple. Um in there. Actually, my Terminators ended up being like fully purple with, I used a lot of that metallic medium to give them this iridescence. Oh, they're gorgeous. Um, I'm really happy with how they came out. Uh, but we, we love the artwork. I love to see it. And this is a different tank. This is a, oh, this is a Land Raider. So I don't have any of these. Or maybe I do. I've got another box back there I've not opened of other things. Yeah, I know. Um, hey, consumerism is how the economy works, okay? I consume. And I save for my retirement. You can do two things at once. <laughs> so I'm super happy with that. I love, one of the things I always have loved about the G-Dubs books is they take such care in how they present their work. Um, and again, this isn't for copying. It's for inspiration. And I think it's also the awe factor. Like, oh, that is just so beautiful. And like, there's something about completing a work that you made Ooh, one of my RCs is trying to lean the wrong way. Let's fix her. There we go. Um, there's something about a work that you've put so much time into and completing it and going, I did that. It's great. Um, and it's teaching me the power of completion. Uh, as of this evening when I'm recording, I'll be finished with my Emperor's Children Army. I'm super happy with it. They're going to get shellacked out back and then they'll be ready to go. You know, I always put some acrylic on the outside, one to preserve their shine, but also to keep fingerprints and stuff from touching my paint took too much work. Don't touch my paint. <laughs> um, I'm going to turn my attention back to some other things for a little while because she's been real, she's been going gangbusters on the Warhammer. So I'll probably pick back up painting Warhammer in July because um, I've got some big figures that I want to finish, namely my spy family. And then I've got my uh, Studio Ghibli I need to finish. And I have a Warhammer, new Warhammer, a Magic the Gathering deck that I've been meaning to build. I have all these cards for Lord of the Rings and I want to build myself a Commander deck. So we did a draft night and yeah, and I went and got some sleeves for it. No, I didn't. I got sleeves for my dog deck from Fallout. Uh, they're, they're Pickle Rick. No, they're not. They're Mr. Poopy Butthole. <laughs> I didn't name the character. But yeah, I got Mr. Poopy Butthole sleeves for that one because it seemed appropriate. And I've got these really beautiful like teal sleeves for my Warhammer Lord of the Rings deck. So I've got projects. You know, when it comes to all this stuff, it's a lot freely acknowledge that it's a lot um get it in where you fit it in i i have started making sure i schedule the things i love i have two or three days a week where i spend two hours in the gym period i have other days of the week if i'm not in the gym i'm doing my hobby stuff find schedule the time look at your calendar figure out where can you devote yourself to fun especially you know if you are still caught up in that portion of your life where you're having to hustle hustle i've been there I, like i'm out of my 20s I'm out of my 30s. <laughs> so um, I'm enjoying the other side of, of hustle life. Um, you'll get there. And if you're not there, even if you can't devote four or five, six hours a week to your hobbies, find an hour a week and alternate your hobbies. One week I might paint. See if you got hobby shops around that do like what ours do with the brush and banter or paint parties where they lay out all the paints and stuff for you, you can just go. 
or the place that does paint and take in town where you give them $10, you can sit there and paint all day. You know, find those things or an hour. Go to the library where it's quiet. You sit in one of the library chairs, you crack a book, and it, that is your time. You know, an hour that you can play a video game. It doesn't have to be a fancy expense. You don't have to go buy an Xbox. You know how many free games are out there? Get, get on that Steam. You know how many free games are on Steam? Like, so many. And I still have so many. I still only play games from when I was 19. <laughs> okay? Find that time to indulge in the things that bring you joy. Because there is so much out there, out there trying to steal your joy on that stuff. Find the moments to bring you joy. They're out there. I am a proponent, an advocate, if you will, of escapism. Especially where here. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.